Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Just a little note from our side to let you know that we're gonna take a short little summer break, but for you programmers out there, we won't leave you empty handed. We have decided to give you a new format that we're gonna try out, which is uh, we gave one of our engineers a part to measure blindly and we filmed him solving the challenge uh, live video game streaming style. So hope you enjoy this format. Let us know if you like it in the comments below or if there's something else you'd like to see, something you'd like us to try, also leave us a comment in the section below. But for now, enjoy your summer. We'll see you next time. Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. We're at the Maple Grove Minneapolis office today and we're gonna try something different. We're gonna do kind of a game live stream thing with uh, a smart person. That's why we brought Luis in to Thank be you, a smart Jay. person. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give Luis a part, kind of blind, and we're gonna have Luis take us through his process and measure some features. Uh, something you should know beforehand, we're gonna ask you to measure it on the O-Inspect here. All right. Uh, running Calypso, we're also, the CAD file is already on the part, mm -hmm. on the computer, and ta-da, here's the part. All right. So basically what we have is a phone case back. Um, there is, on the CAD file, you'll see a datum, mm -hmm. somewhere in the center of that. Uh, there's a hole there. I want a diameter and position, a diameter of the hole, position to the datum the four radii mm -hmm. on the insides. Uh, and then also there's a slot on the side. If you could also give me the width and its location. Um, Wonderful. Sounds, you work. <laughs> sounds doable. Let's get started. <gasps> All right, awesome. All right, so it looks like we have to measure this blue housing. Uh, so we need to come at this in two different directions, obviously from the top and then from the side because we have to figure out the uh, the location of this slot. Uh, what that means for us is we're actually going to need a star stylus system uh, or something that is at least in two angles. Uh, one that's straight down and one that's going to be in the direction of the slot. Um, first I think I'll pick one that's straight down. Now for the one that's straight down uh, we're really just measuring uh, the positions of these so it needs to be smaller than uh, the, the height of this uh, little ledge there, uh, which I think the stylus is, yep. And, uh, and then one that will obviously fit into this hole. Now for the other side, for the slot, we have to get one that is going to fit uh, this slot. So we have to actually cannibalize a probe from another uh, project here. So we'll take that real quick here. I'll take this one, you can see this one's, or maybe you can't see this one. It's, uh, relatively small one we compared to the other one. Uh, now the length doesn't matter uh, so much in this case only because I'm going to be going slow um, and so it won't bend too much. So let's put this on the probe. First we hand tighten them and then we tighten them with our tool. Same procedure for the one that's going to touch the plane. All right. Now, if we were going to measure more uh, on this, maybe we could add a couple more styli, but uh, this seems pretty straightforward and, and should be simple enough. Uh, so let's go ahead and qualify uh, the, this probe. Uh, we've already done the uh, reference for the master probe uh, in the, the reference sphere. Uh, so then we just have to remove that and then put this one on and we'll get to qualifying. All right, so one of the first things we want to do is we want to put away the master probe. So we actually just uh, reference the sphere position here. Uh, so now we can put this away. Uh, we're then going to manually pick up the probe we just prepared uh, and then we'll begin the qualification. Um, right, so we begin with the manual part here and we want to make sure that we line up uh, the dots on the XXT to the dots on the uh, adapter plate here. All right, and then we're going to tell the machine that it has a new probe right here and we'll call it blue, since the part is blue. Um, let's see. And we have to give the first stylus a name. I'm gonna pick the downside, right? So the minus Z direction. Um, and then we'll do the number two is going to be the one that's gonna go into our actual slot. So one underscore minus Z is the appropriate nomenclature, the traditional one that we give it. 
All right, and then we will see the qualification here. So just qualify stylus. Uh, here, because it's a metal part, we're actually going to do a standard probing dynamic. If it was plastic or something, we would uh, uh, maybe reduce the probing dynamic a little bit um, or make the, the probing behavior sensitive so that it doesn't push as hard on the plastic that bends. Uh, in metal, we don't actually have to worry about it. And then we get to probe the reference sphere or the probe in the uh, direction of the shaft. Uh, in this case, it's going to be straight down. Now, because this is the first time we're actually qualifying the stylus, uh, we're doing qualify passive. If this was a quick qualification that we were doing, we could do a geometry requalification. Uh, but almost always, uh, you have to do qualify passive. Now, what that will do is it'll uh, actually take a couple points on the top, and then it'll go around uh, at two different speeds. Uh, and this is actually important that we keep the speed here at 100% uh, so that we get a good measurement. Um, uh, because it really measures deflection here. And so we can basically tell how much it's bending uh, while it's doing it at these two different speeds. Uh, we'll do the same with our other styli. Um, and before this, when we first set up this master probe uh, reference sphere, uh, we told it the correct angle so that when it does the one that's pointing in the uh, plus X direction, uh, it won't hit the shaft. And now we wait. All right, it's almost finished. We can tell. No, we can't. This is when we start having an existential crisis. We're sending out emails. Coffee. Coffee. Coffee is always good when, when you're qualifying probes. All right, now we're actually finishing up. Uh, what we want to look for right, is the radius, make sure that it makes sense. Uh, we, we're also going to look for uh, this value S. S is for sigma. Uh, effectively, what it does is it calculates how round uh, the probe is or how well it was able to measure it. Uh, here we're in metric, uh, so we're 2 tenths of a micron. Uh, so we're actually measuring it really well. Uh, and now we're going to go to this other stylus system. And I'm going to keep uh, the nomenclature uh, that we normally teach in our Calypso Basic class. Uh, so in Calypso Basic, we always do uh, the one that's going in the down direction is 1 minus Z. The one going in the uh, plus Y direction is 2 plus Y. And then in the X is uh, 3 plus X. So we're, we'll go ahead and, and name this one right. So we're going to do stylus number 3, 3 underscore the plus X direction. Okay, and again, we're qualifying passive. Uh, we're making sure that it's on the correct reference sphere, and it is. And let's go ahead and qualify this. Again, we're doing it standard because we're measuring a metal part. Now in the, the direction of the shaft for the probe. All right. Um, sometimes with really small probes, uh, you want to be careful, right? When you're when you're moving the joysticks, um, you always want to be careful with your machine. Make sure that you respect your probes. Uh, they're not free, so we want to make sure we go slow when we we're qualifying them. All 
Uh, and also, another number that we can use for, for reference or to check is there's another sigma value on the reference sphere side. Um, and the sigma value, right, is one-tenth or almost two-tenths of a, of a micron. Uh, and this is actually the, the sigma value uh, for the reference sphere itself. And this is what the master probe was able to, uh, to take the points and calculate uh, how good of a sphere this was. If we, if we see these numbers go up, let's say, above a micron, uh, what we want to do is we want to clean the reference sphere, uh, clean the probe, uh, and then requalify, or, uh, again, take the position for the reference sphere. Um, then, if that doesn't work, if we're still above a micron, what we want to do is we actually want to make sure that our probe isn't broken. Uh, and then, again, try again, make sure everything is tight, make sure you use the tool correctly. Um, and that nothing is wobbling. Things like this will cause a larger sigma value, so this is what gives us an initial idea of whether or not our uh, style I are, are usable, good, um, and, and exactly what we need to, to measure, right? We want to measure with the correct tool. Looks like we're getting close to the end here. All right, the next step is going to be assigning this style of system a position in the stylus rack so that we can take it in and out during the program uh, without any human intervention um, so that it can run automatically. So we already have the position of the rack. That's how we were able to put away the master probe. And all we have to do is assign uh, the, uh, the stall to the correct stylus system. Um, and it's the misspelled blue. I'll, I'll change that name later. We'll see how to do that quickly. Um, and all right, it can be put away when it needs to if we're going to use the vision system at all. Um, but currently, uh, what we'll do is we're going to move over uh, back to our workstation over there, and we're going to create the fixturing uh, that we need to hold down this blue part. Uh, now that we know that our tools are good enough to measure, let's see. Oh, well, I got rid of that window. Uh, but let's go ahead and do that here quickly. So if I want to use the camera at all, uh, something I have to do, right, is we have to use something transparent. Um, so we're, we're going to start with this, and we have to be able to hold this up. Now, because I have this stylus system, uh, we can see that it's about, let's say, uh, 30 millimeters or a little more than an inch um, that it has to be lifted so that it doesn't touch the, the plate while we're uh, measuring the side. So, and we also have some, oh, we also have some magnets that we have to uh, uh, be cautious of when we're positioning this because we want it to snap into our system that we're also going to place on the O inspect here. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. Right, I think it's this one right here. We're going to use a couple of pegs. Now, this plate specifically, I think, takes three millimeter uh, screws in it. So we'll have to make sure that we get the right ones. Let's see. I'm going to use a couple of these, right? And so to tell whether or not this is going to work, what I'll quickly do is I'll actually uh, measure it up to here, right? And it seems like we have to make this a little longer, so we're going to actually have to extend these or stack them. Let's see. I think stacking them might be the easiest solution. Right? So we'll stack them to make sure they're the, the same height, all these. Um, and then uh, we'll put them on here. Now these don't stack into each other. Hmm. So we'll have to figure out maybe these longer ones we'll just use here. We'll just grab four of these longer ones and then we'll get one of these to press down, right? So 
will be a simple. Oh no, it won't. Hmm. Oh, there you go. It will be. All right. So. Well, it looks like we have all the tools that we need. Um, so a good idea is to have right, your all your fixture systems um, as organized as you can have it. Right. So in a in a real shop where where you actually uh, get to do your parts, or here where we get to do customer parts, um, we do the best we can with uh, fitting all these systems in there. Let's see. And making sure we don't lose them. Right? That's also very important. So let's see. Well, all right. Oh, did I leave that little tab in here? Oh, and it's too small for that. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, these all seem too thin. Oh, nope. We found the right one. Look at that. feel like we need to extend this over a little bit. Wonderful. Right, and so well, we want to make sure that it's straight. We also want to make sure uh, that it's not going to move, right? So we might need to actually put another one on here. Um, but so far, we look like we're going to have enough space for the stylus to go on the bottom. Uh, we're going to have this be transparent so that we can see it from the uh, from the through the passing light, um, and it's open enough for us to measure everything. So let's make sure we get just one more on here so that it's stable and, and then we'll be done with the fixture. We'll move on to the actual programming in Calypso. Right, so it doesn't seem like it's going to wobble. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and put these away so we can find them next time we have to use them. All right. Let's go ahead and... Uh, so I'm going to move this up. Uh, something we have to do is, is uh, there's a second piece that actually goes here. And this is what, the, uh, what these magnets that I were talking about actually attach into. Uh, back at our workstation here. Let's see. So we'll have to remove these. All right. Let's get get some uh, Allen keys. That'll be quick. It's always good to know where the tools are.
All right. Well, that explains why that was a little stiff to remove. All right, we're going to move over. And let's find the holes. Let's remove the masters or the reference sphere here. Oh. We're only mere moments from from programming, which is really what it's all about. Right? This is all things we need to do, but aren't aren't the funnest. The funnest part is is programming. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. It's safe there. Now. To make sure, right? It seems pretty stable. Uh, all right. Next part is Calypso. Uh, so for that, we go to X or CAD here, then modification, CAD model transformation. Uh, we're going to rotate it along this uh, green arrow, which is the Y axis, I believe. So we're going to rotate that 180. It's applying. Right. All right, so now uh, if we're using the right hand rule, which is if you uh, point these three directions right perpendicular to each other, uh, the uh, thumb should be X, our index finger should be Y, and our middle finger should point in the Z direction. And we can see that on screen. Uh, it also matches what, we, what the cat is doing. All right, uh, I'm going to switch to using the correct stylus uh, direction. So we're gonna be using, uh, and we're gonna start with Z. Uh, the one pointing down because we want the biggest feature to be the one that we start uh, probing from. So let's go ahead and define that geometry. Let's open it up right? and we have to create a strategy for it. Now something we have to keep in mind is the fixturing that we're using. So we want to go make sure that we uh, jump over these little holders here. Um, but that we, we capture as much of this as possible. So one of the goals here is to make sure that it's as flat. So let's go ahead and um, let's collect a couple points and then we'll make a uh, polyline from this. Right. And if I see it correctly, we'll just go around here, avoiding that. And we'll go around here, avoiding that second one. And we'll highlight all these points. Let's go ahead and make this into a polyline. Wonderful. So we see a couple of the points here. Uh, it's very squared off. So I'm going to go to where we see those really sharp corners. And let's see if we can't make them into, oh, we can't make them into circles. Uh, we're going to have to take them as uh, straight lines. Uh, not to worry, the actual CMM will curve the edges um, some amount. And let's see, 15. So 15 for a speed on a passive sensor is actually really high. Um, if we still want to go really fast, I think the max I would do is 10, but let's go for 7.5. Uh, we don't want this to be a slow program, I think, initially, uh, but we do need it to, uh, to you know, be reasonable in, in the amount of time it takes. So step width. Uh, let's see, we can do every one millimeter. If we do every one millimeter, uh, we can expect 260 points. Let's do every quarter millimeter. So every 250 microns, 1,000 points for that should give us a reasonable uh, result as to what the uh, flatness of this part is. All right, and our stylus here, one minus Z, perfect. All right, now we need to, uh, this is what's gonna be our primary uh, uh, base alignment feature and so this is going to take care of our wobble uh, something we want to do is we want to clock this uh, make sure that it's not rotating in what would be the z-axis uh, we can do that with let's see well we can do that with one or two lines uh, let's say let's say let's pick the top line yeah the top line um, and we'll do it with the same probe 
So let's define a line on this plane. Oh, so something that, that happens is when you drag, usually uh, you're supposed to be able to uh, make the CAD move. Uh, here I dragged on the CAD, so it actually made a 2D line up here. Let's see. All right, so we made a 2D line. We'll make it uh, flat to the surface. And so the angle here should be zero. Uh, I'm assuming everything's squared, and, and it is. Uh, sometimes on plastic parts, we'll find that uh, there is a, a draft angle uh, because of the way it cools. Um, all right, so we have our line here. Let's see, path. Uh, let's let's keep the, the same the same type of scanning. So we'll do seven and a half uh, millimeters a, a second. Uh, we'll do the same 250 250 uh, microns. Uh, which will give us almost 200 points, that'll be fine. Okay, and so this is going to be our clocking direction. Uh, I want to make sure that everything stays centered here, so I'm go also going to do the same process to the bottom uh, and to the two other sides. Uh, the only thing we'll have to be careful of is how far we scan when we're doing the sides, because we don't want to hit, again, we don't want to hit these two uh, fixtures points. So let's go ahead. Oh. And if you're not careful, that'll happen. You don't want to make extra lines for no reason. Okay, another thing we can do is if we want to be uh, particularly careful with this is we can make sure that they're measured at the same uh, Z height. So here we're one, minus um, 1.38, right? So let's see what the other one's at, minus two. So this one is, I guess, a little bit lower than the other. Let's make them an even two or minus two here, just so that we're measuring everything at the same height. Wonderful. Okay. Now we can do these two other planes. Here we have the slot, and so this slot uh, happens right before our fixture point. So we're actually just going to stop with before that slot. On the other side, we can go a little bit further, but not too much. Let's go ahead and drag this line. All right, so this third line. Let's make that an even two. Strategy. We're going to make the same exact speed, 0.5. So something that uh, we can keep in mind is if this is the way we're going to be programming, is we can actually make this a default strategy. So we can always make it so that it always scans this amount of points, uh, so that it always goes this fast when we're selecting lines or planes. Um, this helps uh, speed up programming, but we're just doing it, uh, I guess, the old-fashioned way here. All right. And then we'll do this other one. The last line we're doing here. And with this, we should have the general features we're going to use to measure completed. Um, and we just have to make sure that they're being calculated in the, in the way we would like. Um, what does that mean? So that means that we um, can keep the center to the center. Um, here, um, we don't have to make it the, the base alignment the center, um, but I like to. It keeps it simple. Um, the fewer buttons we have to push, the the better. Uh, so for this, I'm going to actually make a, a symmetry uh, between line one and two, and then we'll do it between line three and four. Uh, so let's do that. And it's quick. Right, and we see it cuts down through the center of the part. All right. I like to do copy and paste. There's also some other tricks we can do uh, where we push F5 and we can search for the for the feature that we actually want to use. All right, wonderful. And so we have a symmetry going along uh, the center, uh, perpendicular, and then one going along the uh, length of the part. Then quickly we'll go to the base alignment. And because this is a prismatic part, we're going to use the the standard uh, method. All right, so like I said in the beginning, uh, our plane, our initial plane, that's going to be what we use for our rotation in space, our wobble, uh, if you will. Uh, the second 
feature we'll use is our Symmetry 1. So this takes uh, the top and the bottom um, and basically is, is our clocking feature. Then we will use our X origin as Symmetry 2. So this is uh, the center of the part along the length. And uh, for our Y origin, right, you guessed it, it's going to be the Symmetry 1 again. And last but not least, this is the Z origin. So this is going to be what locks it in the last degree of freedom. So uh, what are degrees of freedom? So we have uh, our X, Y, and Z, and we can move in X, we can move in the Y, we can move in the Z. Uh, we can also rotate along each of those uh, different axes. Um, so those are six different degrees of freedom. Uh, rotation in space removes two of them, two different uh, axes of rotation. Planar is supposed to get rid of the last axis of rotation. And the origins get rid of the translation. Right, so you can think of this as like a virtual fixture that we're using. Um, and then always, usually by default, the base alignment set to zero. This is why I wanted to keep the, the X and Y origin at zero. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you would just remove this little checkbox here. Okay, so now our, our base alignment is set. The second thing we see here um, is our clearance plane. Um, so we'll move down this and then we'll go over to the features and characteristics. Make sure that we get everything that Jay asked us for. So in the clearance planes, um, we can see that there's a little uh, stylus at the corner of our, of our reference sphere, or our sphere, our cube here, sorry. Um, and what we can do is we can actually bring the probe to the same location um, and that'll give us our most positive values. So our most positive X, Y, and Z. And so we position it. And we can be we can be generous. If if we need to speed things up, we can start cutting things down. But I, I always think about a hands width uh, distance is always good. Um, oh well, actually we have a CAD. Uh, well, so this is the way I would actually do it um, if I didn't have the CAD, and that's actually what I'm used to. Uh, but since we have the CAD, we can actually just click a button, and about 10 millimeters, uh, we'll say is about a, a hands width away. Um, that'd be a thin hand, but that's, we'll just say that works. Um, let's look at this. All right, so it doesn't look too too big. I do want to extend it in the X directions and a little bit in the Y or in the Z. Let's do that. So we'll make this 20. This will just lift things up. So I want the probes to actually lift up so that it always clears the uh, the fixtures here. And the same same logic follows uh, with the X directions. So I just want to give it a little extra space. Right, and so uh, what that did is widened up the clearance plane here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do a quick run to make sure that the, the CMM knows where the part is. And then we'll start adding things like uh, the circle uh, that he needs and the slot. Yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. We'll go to run. This also lets us run the, the initial. Uh, program a little slower. It's always uh, good to initially run it slow. Um, it keeps us from from right having any collisions. Uh, we'll clear the existing. We'll do a manual alignment here. All right, and there it says all characteristics. We don't have any characteristics as of yet, uh, but we will. So we can go ahead and start this alignment. Now it says it needs me to probe a thousand points. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna probe about three or four. And that will give it an idea of where this part is, or where the plane is. And so another good idea is to measure these points uh, with as much of a distance in between them as possible. Uh, this just adds to the stability of the program, or the actual uh, manual alignment. And then we have to do this line up here. And the minimum number of points you need, oh, so the minimum number of points you need for a line is two. Uh, I accidentally took three because I left it on the surface. Easy fix. We have a little button that just removes the last point that you probed. Easy peasy. All right, now we do the other one. Yep. 
the bottom line. Okay. Return to go to the next feature. Or I could have clicked OK on the screen here. I think this is the part that's most similar to a video game. At least it seems like it. Okay. So we'll we'll start a little slow here. The potentiometer. So it's about to go into CNC mode. Make sure that I've moved it away and it's in a clear position. It's Say yes. All right. And here is when we start judging whether or not we selected the right points, uh, you know, whether or not it's going fast enough. Um, this, is, this is really where we'll see uh, the, the initial uh, results of, of our work. Okay. Looks like I avoided the uh, fixture system. Wonderful. Okay, now I think the next part is supposed to be up at the top, then we'll do the bottom. It'll go in the same order as uh, the order it had me probe the uh, manual alignment in, right? And it went high enough to clear the fixture. So, so far, so good. Uh, something we'll have to keep in mind uh, is the clearance distance when we're going to measure the little slot. We want to make sure that it um, doesn't hit anything. All right. Sweet. And because we were taking uh, every quarter millimeter, we're taking a point. Uh, I think the, the smallest line gives us at least 100 points. So we'll have plenty of good data. Here we have a little info for the run, and it's telling us, hey, I don't have anything to report. There's no values, right? Or nothing, no features available. And that's because we have no characteristics. But that's, that's OK. We'll just reset that here. Um, and we can do things like check the uh, actual points that are measured. And here you can see the difference that I was telling you about earlier, where we round the corners a little bit. Um, this is to help smooth uh, the, the path that the stylus is actually taking. Uh, you can imagine sharp corners, right? Uh, increasing speed in one direction, going to zero, and then going the other direction. Um, that doesn't let things run smoothly. Uh, so this is good. OK, now let's remember what Jay asked for. So he wanted to make sure that it was flat. Let's go ahead and do that. So here I can push F5. I can do flatness. And here we can just put in the plane. Right? He didn't give us a tolerance, but Say, say 100, or 100 microns, tenth of a millimeter uh, is good enough. Uh, we can come and edit this later, and we'll see it in the report. But let's say that's OK. Uh, something else we can do is, is, because this is a feature we're going to be measuring, uh, we should turn on some evaluation characteristics. Uh, these would be things like the filter and the outlier eliminating, or elimination. Um, so we have a cookbook, and it tells us exactly right if this is the size of the metal uh, plane you're measuring, you should be doing this for a filter, uh, this for an outlier specifically. In general, this is, this is very general. Um, 80, you get 85, about 85% of the way there if just clicking these two things on. Um, now, if you if you want to, if you're working with microns and you want to be very precise, I would encourage you to look at the cookbook. Um, and also, if you're a beginner, use the cookbook. Uh, it'll give you a sense of taste um, for, for what you should be expecting for the uh, filter and outlier elimination. Uh, but I think this is, is plenty good since we're using this as a characteristic. Now, another thing uh, that he wanted to know was the distances, right? So the, the, from the top, the general dimensions, he said, I think. So from the top to the bottom and the sides. And so we'll do that by getting um, distances. Let's see, I think we can do caliper distance. Right. Oh, and there's two of them. Let's see what the first one is. Right. So the first one, uh, this is going to be along axes, um, which is fine because we aligned it according to the axis of these. So we want to do for line one, which is the top, uh, line two, which is the bottom. Uh, and then we want to 
get the actuals. And so this is going to be in the y direction. Um, we can assume, right, so here it's assuming for us, right, that 97.6 millimeters is the actual uh, length that it's supposed to be. Let's say that's true. Okay. And we'll go again. We'll add another caliper distance. And we're going to do this one for 3 and 4, and it's going to be in the x direction. Uh, when you get to bigger programs, something I would recommend doing is actually labeling these. So you can rename line 9-3 line uh, to the you know, minus x side uh, and line 4 to the plus x side. Uh, this will make it easier if you have right, 100 different features that you have to figure out. Um, should be straightforward. Okay, and so it's telling, let's, let, let's make it a round number here. So it says it should be about 63.1 millimeters in the x direction. Um, I'll assume that that's, that's about right. Um, we'll give it some general tolerances. Here, the general fine tolerance is going to be 150 microns. Uh, that, should be, that should be good, I think. Um, and then, what else did he ask for? He asked for uh, the slot, and so we'll do that next. So the slot, we actually have to make sure that we get that with the number three probe, or with the one that's going in the uh, plus x direction. So how can we do this? Well, we can get the entire distance, uh, the size of it, uh, by getting the two circles at the end. And then we can get the position of it by having a symmetry point uh, of where those two circles are. So let's go ahead and do that quickly here. So define cylinder or circle on a cylinder. And we're in about the center. Let's move this to the bottom of our list, right? And we see that this has a diameter of three millimeters. And so when you are doing something like this, you want to make sure in the beginning, like we did, uh, that you have a stylus that can fit. And then we have the other side. So let's go ahead and get this one out. OK, and circle two. Let's look at their strategies. All right, one circle path. Oh, what do I? I still have that selected here. So I still had the tool for selecting a line selected. Um, let's make sure we get rid of that because uh, it wasn't helping. And something else we see here is that it created a full circle. So we obviously need less than a full circle. I'm going to say so that we don't uh, overmeasure. Let's do about 170 uh, degrees in angle range. Right, and that it starts a little uh, before then. So I think we should take away. And so right now I'm using the right-hand rule where my thumb is going in Z and I'm going minus 90. So uh, the start angle, let's see if that works. Right, and it does. Um, but I did 170, so let's add 5 to either end. That'll make it so that it stops 5 uh, before the 180 and begins 5. Uh, or Yeah, so it doesn't go all the way around. Uh, here it wants to set it at one and a half millimeters a second. Now, is this reasonable speed? Uh, so it is. I was going seven and a half for the lines and the planes uh, because these are little features we should really actually be going uh, really slow. Um, and so that's fine. And 50 points for the strategy. Uh, that should also be fine. But in case we're worried, let's, let's add 100 so we can uh, filter out any noise that we think we might uh, get. So let's do the evaluation. Here we'll also do uh, the outlier elimination and the filter. And let's give the same treatment to the circle on the other side. OK, so 170 for the angle range. And if we follow that right-hand rule that I was talking about, right, so it should be plus 90 degrees start angle. 95, right? Because we're doing, we're we're cutting a total of 10 degrees off the 180, right? So that means we can cut off five degrees from the beginning of the circle, five degrees from the end of the circle. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So something else we have to check is to make sure that the clearance group is going in the right direction. So this is the minus x clearance group. So this means the probe will leave in the direction of minus x. That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is if we imagine our safety cube, it's going to penetrate the minus x plane. Um, and is circle 1 
that way? Yes, it is. Um, so right now, so it's giving us uh, this magenta color uh, because it doesn't have anything to calculate. Uh, it'll, it should be uh, solved once we actually get everything uh, with points in it. All right, so let's do that next thing. So we need to figure out a center point. So let's go ahead and create a symmetry. Circle one, circle two. Okay, so that will give us our position. So position of that symmetry. Right, and we can really only do it in one direction, right? So make sure that we only do it in the y direction. Because, right, so it, it, moving in and out is not so important because we're only doing a single circle along the cylinder. Okay. Um, and then, last but not least, we're going to be doing this circle on the, on the bottom. And I wanted to do that with uh, light and the camera so that we can use all the sensors and so that we... Uh, can, uh, yeah, and because the, the probe is also a little big, so I don't want to have to use it. Um, so I'm going to put the stylus system away. So I'm going to store it, right? And you can see here, I actually renamed it. Uh, turns out I get a little bit nervous on camera. You guys make me blush, all of you watching. All right, so now we don't have a stylus system in here. And so we can turn on the camera. Uh, by going to the little hand. This is the, the manual input for the uh, stylus camera. And, oh, okay, optics. So we have 10 different magnifications to pick from. Um, so which one do we want to use? It depends on the uh, tolerance that we're going to put on this uh, characteristic here. Um, if it's really small, then you want to make sure that you are measuring uh, with the uh, largest magnification possible. Um, if it's big tolerance, then right, you want to make sure that you can find your part. Um, here, I will use the 161. So 161 is really special for the inspect. It's uh, telecentric. Um, so there's not going to be a, um, it's not going to go to a horizon. It's going to uh, show us the, the whole uh, bore as it, as it is. Um, yes. Maybe we'll get into telecentricity in a later video. Actually, there's a really good one, uh, Measuring Hero video, that we should look into. And this, what, what it does is it turns on uh, the camera. So uh, what, it, what it actually does is turn on the camera and the top light. So we want to actually make sure that the light comes from the bottom because we don't need it uh, transmitting. We need it, uh, or sorry, we don't need it reflecting. We need it transmitting. So we need backlight, all right? So we can see that we're getting some color from here. And something else we can do, we have, once we turn on the camera, we actually have this little laser that tells us where the objective, the center of the objective is pointing. So let's go ahead and move that. All right. So why am I moving it to where the hole is? So I want to make sure that I have the right light setting uh, when we're actually going to be measuring this. Okay. Oh, and we can also tell that it's a little dirty. Um, there's there's uh, maybe some flashing here, maybe some just dust. Um, all right, so we're going to use backlighting. 19% seems like good value. So let's go ahead and, and just uh, okay this. Um, and let's go back to the CAD. All right, so the CAD view shows us where the camera's looking. We're going to create a circle on a cylinder again here. If it lets us. Okay, so it did let us. All right, and something else we can do is pick out which direction it's going to be scanning. So right now we have this blue arrow, so it tells us we're going to look at the gray to the dark. I actually want to flip this around. I like to go from material to no material uh, when I'm using backlight. So I'm going to open up the strategy, go to the settings. Here we have this extra tab that maybe you haven't seen before if you haven't used optics. Uh, and it will let us switch the direction uh, that we're scanning in. Wonderful. It also has a speed. Now the speed with the camera is not so important. It'll take the pictures as fast as it can. Uh, what does matter here is the number of points that we will be using. Uh, 250 sounds like plenty. Um, also, uh, 
All right, so, so we have that. Uh, something I want to change is actually the area that it uses to scan uh, for this. Uh, we can see on the screen here that the uh, where the camera thinks it is, or where we're seeing it on screen, and where the CAD thinks it is, it's there, there's some discrepancy there. Uh, something we can do to fix this is we can actually make the area that it's searching for bigger. All right, so search length here is 0.3. Um, let's make it 0.5, see what it looks like. Right, so will that get everything that's in the circle? So we can move this around, and yeah, we're going to be missing big chunks of this. Um, so let's increase this right by another quarter millimeter. Um, well, how big can we get this so we get the whole thing? Oh, let's make sure we're looking at it at the right angle. So we need to make it even bigger. So a millimeter search length is still not enough. Right. All right, so now we're at 1.5 millimeter search length. We're looking for 250 points. We're going from material to no material. Let's make sure that this. So we should be getting uh, enough of the circle, the entire circle, to actually know uh, whether or not we have the correct size and whether or not we're in the correct position. Um, right. We want to make sure that when we're programming for ourselves, for, for our jobs, uh, we want to make sure of a couple more things, right? That any variability that comes through the machine, that that's also taken into account for. So if I were if I were measuring a bunch of these parts, right, instead of just one for for J, uh, what I would do is I would increase the search length even more. Uh, this this is going to improve the chances that I get all the points that I need to on every part that I need to uh, when measuring. All right. Okay, and like I said, we need a couple things here. We need the diameter. It's always good. Circle three with the last one that we we just uh, selected. We need the position. Right of this circle. And oh, from I should have written it down, but I think this is this is what he asked for so far. So let's measure this. Um, we'll see about how long it takes. Um, and we'll call Jay back, and then we'll see if uh, he needs us to, to measure anything else or if uh, uh, this is what um, all he needs in the report. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, hold on. Before I run this, I want to make sure that the clearance plane for this makes sense. Plus C, that makes sense. Uh, these, again, still make sense. All right. And I think we can run this a little faster than we did the, f the first time. And the part demo, that's the, the name of the alignment because that's the name of the part or the program. Let's go ahead and get that started. All right, first thing it's going to do, obviously, because it needs to find the part, make sure it knows where it is, is it's going to pick up the stylus system. OK, and it's going to then run that little pattern that we saw it run the first time right after I did the manual alignment. And, and once, you, once you're doing this, once you're, you're I guess, what, what we'll call this is debugging, once you're debugging uh, the program, uh, something you'll start to take note of is, OK, this is a big plane. We could actually go a little faster. So instead of the 7.5, we could have done maybe the 10 or the 12 and a half, right? Um, you'll get a sense for these things the more you use them. Now, if it was a really tight tolerance, I would always recommend going slow. Uh, the tighter the tolerance, right, you want to make sure that you really get those points. Uh, because at some point, we're just chasing microns. And we want to make sure that uh, they're correctly measured and correctly reported. Right at the bottom. What I'm actually most nervous for is going to be that slot. Um, because it's a little. Um, and yeah, I mean, right, little, little I, I don't know if it's going to uh, be as off as the other circle was that we saw when we were using the, the camera. Uh, so we want to be careful. Uh, and because we want to be careful, I'm actually going to have my, my hand here over the potentiometer uh, to make sure that right, it all goes as planned. Oh, I went a little fast there, but safe. It's safe. Okay, and the second one. All right, and so it got a little stuck here. Um, 
So what that means for us is, is maybe the, the CAD and the part are a little off. Um, so what we'll have to do is we'll actually have to look at it. Let's see. I have to green light this so that I can get this out of the way. Hmm. Okay. Now, so it's this circle, circle two, that gave us the issue. Hmm. And something we can do is we can actually give it a position uh, to go to between the uh, clearance plane and the uh, actual part where it goes measures, when it goes and measures. Let's see. Let's see if we can pick that. Right, so all I did was I uh, hit this little target button um, on the right joystick and it gave me a CMM position. Right, so I'm going to have a CMM position between the clearance data and the circle path. Uh, here, what we'll do is, and this we'll have to do this slow because right, we already know that this likes to collide, um, is we will run it slow. So we'll do an execute now, uh, which is the F9 key. And so it's going to go directly there. Uh, let's go ahead and do this, but we're going to be running it at, say, 5% speed. Right? Oh, has to move out of the way. OK. There you go. All right, and so something it did was it actually went in twice. So this is called scan optimization. Uh, scan opti optimization, what it does is it, uh, if it doesn't measure something correctly, it goes and it uh, measures it again. So it makes sure that it's getting the right uh, info. It also gave us a little uh, warning here saying that it was error scanning. So it thought um, where the part should be and where it is is a little different, um, but it's actually doing exactly what we needed to uh, in measuring. Oh, let's see. So we're not actually getting any points. Hmm. Let's make sure that we have a circle path with the right number of points. Let's try 100. And we can go slower since this is our, our special, special circle that, for this part, in this case, is misbehaving. And since we know that it's going to be safe, we can just run that again. Maybe this time a little tiny bit faster. And like it did the first time, it's giving us this little uh, warning here that it did not. Oh, and now we have a little error. Let's see. We can see here on the screen where it thinks the probe is versus where it actually is. No, I don't have the best view. Uh, but something we can do is we can turn on the uh, O inspects camera or O inspects light. So O inspect. Volume illumination on. Oh. It seems someone has taken my light bulb. Okay. Hmm. So, something we can do uh, for the sake of time is we can extract the circle. So we'll just extract it, we'll give it the same strategy. Um, and then we'll revisit this problem when we have uh, maybe some more time. So let's, for the meantime, and for, for the sake of your time, let's do this manually. Oh. Let's get rid of that last point. Raise it up a little bit. All right, we have a third point. All right, so we have three points, and this makes a sphere, or a circle. Oh, and we can see here on the screen, so where we took this, we can see that it's actually offset a little bit uh, from where our part actually is. That's fine, no problem. Uh, here what we'll do, well, let's, let's accept this as a feature. 
now it's officially a, a circle there. Uh, we're going to make this into a circle path that has uh, basically the same function as our other one. Okay, 100 points. All right, let's see. Delete, delete that one, delete that point. Okay, now let's just test this circle by itself. Uh, make sure it has the right clearance plane. Now, if this one doesn't work, I'll be a little red in the face, but only because I'm shy. All right, wonderful. So it didn't give us the warning that it was error scanning. It didn't tell us that it was gonna do the, the path optimization. So it only scanned it once this time. Uh, because we had probed it, it knows where it should be um, for the part. And we will make sure that the position of, well, we have to change the symmetry. So symmetry, instead of circle one, circle two, is going to be circle one, uh, circle four. The one that we just probed. Okay, let's get rid of circle two. All right, and we continue. So we know so far the program is good up until this point. Let's go ahead and make sure that it can do the final part here. All right. For the final part, we need the camera, so it's going to put away the stylus system. All right, takes one or two seconds. And we can see that it's trying its best. Yep, and it's collecting all these points. Again, I think we're looking for 250 points. Now that we have all the data, we're actually able to get a report from PyWeb. And there you go. So our positions are failing. That's OK. Uh, we sort of expected that, right? Since we weren't finding the uh, circle in the right position, and since uh, one of our slot circles was misbehaving. Um, so this is what we expect. Let's go ahead, and we're just going to run the whole program through uh, from the start to finish. Let's clear existing. We're going to clear the results in order to do that. And we're going to, again, go to the correct uh, alignment. Right, let's go ahead and start. Oh, we could probably go a little faster too. Um, let's maybe not 300, let's go 200 millimeters a second. All right, so it's gonna go load up on the stylus. And again, the order should be uh, the, the plane on the top there, or the, the base plane. We should then do the top uh, line, bottom line, the left and right. Uh, all with the one minus C probe. Then we're going to go do the two circles with the uh, with the minus or with the plus Y probe or plus X. There you go. Yeah, plus X. Uh, then we'll finish it out with the circle. All right. And it's doing that path, the winding path, making sure that it avoids the, the fixture here. You know, I'll have to talk to Jay about uh, the part being a little off uh, the CAD. Maybe it was one of those other three CADs that we had uh, as an option. And I just picked the first one. Well, one of the many things you should do when, when you start programming is make sure you have the correct file for the work you're doing. All right, and here's the Here's the moment of truth, right? So something we want to do when we're measuring is we want to make sure that we can measure precisely, consistently, accurately. Um, and it seems to have done that. Ah, OK. So it didn't do that second circle. Here's why. So it's actually going to switch to the camera. It's going to look at that circle number three. The reason is uh, when we were running this, we ran in the order of feature, feature uh, 
list, right? So it did the plane first, it's running in that order. Now it's gonna go do the uh, circle number four because I programmed it last. Now if I wanted it to run before the camera, all I would do is I would drag it to be uh, run right before circle number three. So not to worry, we have a couple of uh, opportunities here to optimize this to make it faster, but in a couple minutes time, we, we have a program that runs in about two and a half minutes. Uh, and I think now it's time to go call Jay, make sure that we have uh, what he's looking for, um, and, and talk to him, make sure we have the right cat. All set? All set, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, I, I watched you, obviously, the whole time, and I threw you a curveball. Uh, the slot is, this part is off, uh, the slot's in the wrong spot. So uh, that okay. was, I wanted to see a sweat. Actually, what we wanted to do was to see uh, your thought process of working through a uh, problem. So sorry, and oh, thank you. It's, it's all right, I, I was sweating, I was, I was a little red, <laughs> but uh, you know, in the end, right, we, we measured what we needed to, I think. Yep, oh. uh, we did miss, um, we did miss the uh, four radii. Is that going to be hard to throw in there? No, I, the stylus is in there, so we should be able to just uh, do that right now. Cool, yeah. can we do let's, it? Let's, yeah, let's do it. Awesome. All right, so let's make sure that we're doing it with the one that's uh, straight down, the one minus Z. And then what we have to do from here is select the radii. All right, so let's select them. Let's go clockwise. Uh, the only thing I'll do is make sure that they are measured at the same height, uh, that their clearance plane is correct, and then we should be good to go. Um, let me actually move circle three down to the bottom. And so this, this will make it run smoothly through the whole thing. All right, so clearance plane plus Z, then the, uh, what is this? So line, it's done at this height. And so it changed from when we originally programmed it only because uh, we now have a base alignment. So let's paste that in there, make sure that the strategy is fine. Yep, it's going relatively slow, which is good. Uh, 50 points, that should be enough to let us measure everything. So it looks like the only thing we really have to change is the Z height. Just make them consistent. Just make them consistent. Mm -hmm. right? Consistency is important when you want to do right runs and, and compare things uh, to each other. And then let's add the radius to all of these. Oh. So So it is really easy to just go back and Yeah, I you know it really is. Um, you need something added and then we can just go ahead just right add it really quick. Make sure it's in the right order. You know. No biggie. Wow. Yep. I mean at this point it's just clicking right the things you want to be measured. And we can run it. Now, if we don't have to run the whole thing, then we can just undo uh, the clear existing results, and it'll actually go straight to um, what's left. measuring what's left. Yeah. That easy. That easy, right? And because the clearance, clearance plane is, is, is all set, we don't have to worry about the fixturing here. Right? So I don't know, a minute or something to, to add and we got a everything. new characteristics. And now everything uh, should work should be about two and a half minutes. Perfect, uh, we yeah. got all our info. All right. Luis, thanks for being our guinea pig on this one. Uh, yeah, no problem. Was it fun? You wanna do it, this again? I'll do this again, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah. All right, and then for you out there, if you want to make Luis sweat, uh, send us your part. Uh, let us know what we can do, give him a challenge. Uh, we'll try this on different machines, configure differently, and uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll make Luis sweat. Yeah, we'll make this a recurring thing. Awesome, cool, man. Thank you for being a guinea pig. No problem. Appreciate it. For you out there, stay safe, stay healthy. See you next time.